Hello everyone and welcome back to Katawa Shoujo. I forgot to save. There, I've saved now. Not that that actually did anything to like disrupt the schedule of videos, but hey, whatever. Oh, by the way, today is Valentine's Day. It's not gonna. This episode's not gonna come out on Valentine's Day, but I just want you to know, if you don't have a Valentine's, I love you very much, but you can't be mine. Um. <clears throat> For a change, I'm not among the first ones to come to cl <laughs> morning class. Instead, almost everyone else seems to be here. I recognize most of my class by their faces now, but this, the, the names still escape me. Escape me still. The class goes on lazily. I'm starting to think... I'm starting to get into the rhythm of school. I've even stopped worrying about taking notes and being overly attentive. The first days, I was pretty high strung in the class. What is this, Thursday? Friday? I can't remember. Also, doesn't Japanese school go like... Monday through Friday and Saturday is a half day? I can't remember that either. Muto finishes his lecture, lecture about electricity early. But continues without a pause about the festival. So, as you know... The festival is on the day after tomorrow. I hope everyone's projects are going to be successful this year. Have a good time, but also come Sunday, please keep the meaning of this festival in your minds. Games and fried food? Everyone bursts out into laughter, and so do I. Yes, thank you, Mikado. But what I meant is... The remainder of his sentence is buried beneath the ring of the bell <laughs> lunch bells, and everyone starts packing their things. Muto deliberately deliberates for a moment, but since almost nobody seems to pay attention anymore, he gives up and sits down. Oh, hey. Terrifying. These people don't have faces. Um, it's crowded in the hallway, or as crowded as hallways in this school probably get. Most, most of the students seem to be heading down toward the cafeteria. Hisao! Ow, I bit my tongue. I'm going to give you a one-time only super extra special lunch offer. Um, rad. Emmy's homemade lunch boxes. And the privilege of enjoying them in private with two bombshell beauties. Her overly flirtatious sales pitch echoes in the hallway. A remarkable feat since it's full of people. Emmy strikes a confident looking pose as though as an attempt to one-up her own ridiculousness, puffing her very modest chest and oh god, um very modest chest, and making the V stand for victory with her hand. Sounds delicious. To what do I owe the honor of being invited? You stood there looking really lost and sad, so I thought you could use some company. That is probably the most depressing reason imaginable. So how about it? You're probably really lonely and would eat that awful cafeteria food all alone otherwise. Eh, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Sure, I'll have your lunch offer. With pleasure. Let's go to the roof. The roof? Why the roof? Because that's where we eat lunch. Oh. Well, I need to fuck. Um, and if I don't get up there early, then she'll probably wander off, and then I just know she'll go hungry, because she never packs a lunch for herself. Who will? Come with me! Without answering my question or waiting for a response, she grabs me by the arm and drags me through the hallways. I attempt to make conversation on the way. Why do you have an extra lunch? Emmy smiles guiltily. Actually, it's yesterday's lunch. I slipped in a run at, I slipped in a run at lunch and forgot to eat it. Huh. Huh. So I'm getting day old food. Delicious. Uh, the stairway to the roof is a little dilapidated, but it's clearly been used recently. Clearly! I'm going through a second puberty, don't worry about that. Uh, at the top of the stairs is a door complete with missing padlock. I wonder who the intrepid 
uh, individual was that removed that padlock. Emmy shoves the door open and start and beaming into the sunlight. <gasps> who could that be? Guys, who's that Pokemon? Suddenly a tall, dark stranger appears out of nowhere, standing imposingly on the in front of us. Emmy flinches back, almost falling down the stairs. Eee! Hello. Yipes! You scared me, Ren! Wait, isn't she Guys, did you guess Ren? If you guessed Ren, you did it right. You win. You're a very special and wonderful person. Hello. Noticing that Rin is speaking to me, Emmy looks curiously at me. You two know each other? Like, oh my god. What a small world. I look confusedly at Emmy. She's that friend of yours? Rin has her gaze towards the clouds drifting above the school. I didn't know you knew this person, Emmy. The awkward silence lasts for only a few seconds, until Emmy lets out a tiny giggle, shrugging off the coincidence. I invited I invited Hisa out for lunch. If you know him, that's just better. Oh, does this mean I don't get food? Or did you invite him for lunch without the lunch? Um, neither. I have food for like three. Nice thinking. Is Emmy that tall? Or is she like, what's going on? Like, I didn't think Emmy was that tall. She, they talk, They walk to the other end of the roof while I stay at the clock tower for a while, taking the atmosphere. There's nobody else here, and I guess the roof is not as popular as it is in other schools. Oh. Uh, okay. There's nobody else but us here. I guess the roof is not as popular in other schools. A few rundown benches and tables are scattered around the edges, perhaps in an attempt to make the roof look less desolate. The small pebbles covering the roof rattle beneath our feet. I peek through the chain link fence to take a look at the schoolyards and beyond. Students are strolling in pairs and groups around the quadrangle. They have that at this high school? That's surprising. And at the cafeteria. A few trucks, a few delivery trucks are driving past at the school towards the convenience store nearby. Somewhere, a watchdog barks at a passerby. Somehow, when I look towards the town center, the small town feels, strikes me very strongly, almost palpably. The hectic lifestyle of big metropolis Tropolises, tropo, tropolises, tropolises, metropolises seems too so far away and foreign here. Nobody has to run to catch a bus like their life depended on it, or get their sensors overloaded by the neon lights and traffic jams. I feel surprisingly optimistic about this new life of mine, looking at my new hometown, even if it's going to be mine for only one short year. Finding out about my illness and having to move away from home all came so suddenly I didn't have time to think or feel about it. When I s step out of the shadow cl of the top clock tower, the top tower, uh, to the open, I f feel warmth touching my back. The sun shines from a perfectly clear cerulean sky. A cool breeze sweeping over the rooftop makes me shiver, but only briefly. The wind carries the scent of trees and flowers, not smog and car exhaust like it used to just a few weeks ago. Emmy settles on a bench and with Rin in tow, and produces one big bag and two small lunch boxes. One big and two small lunch boxes from her bag. C like, come on, Hisao. What are you waiting for? She's beckoning me to join them making room. 
making room, making room on the already small bench. I seat myself on the corner of the bench to take up as little space as possible. It's pretty cramped, but somehow all three of us fit on it. Impressive view. Wait, why is there a bench up here if the it used to be locked? Whatever. Emmy suppresses a giggle and places a lunchbox in front of Ren and hands another lunchbox to me. Here you go. L here you go, like lunch as promised. Homemade, no less. I'm impressed. Wow, this looks really good. <laughs> Thanks. I make it myself when I can. Conversation dies off as I set out, set out about the business of feeding myself. Taking a few bites, I glance up and notice Def Rin deftly opening the lunchbox, popping a fork full of food into her mouth using only her feet. Even though I've seen it before, I can't be help but be impressed at her dexterity. Did you know dexterity usually actually, or I don't know if it always means this, but it primarily talks about like how your hands work. So you know, that's ironic. That's a funny little phrase. It's also a reminder of the sort of place I am in right now. Will I get used to sights like such as this? Can't decide if such a thing would be good or bad thing either. Does getting used to this place mean that I'm giving up on being a normal person, or does it mean that I'm becoming a more understanding, compassionate human being about those around me? I'm distracted from my own thoughts by the sight of Amy tearing into her lunch as if it had insulted her ancestors. You seem pretty hungry. Amy looks up, mouth half full, and swallows before nodding. My morning run always makes me work up an appetite, which is great because I burn th through lunch pretty quickly. Helps me keep my girlish figure. Hmm. What would happen if you'd lose it? Would you become a man? I don't want to talk about traps right now, Rin, okay? I very nearly choke on my lunch trying not to laugh. It's a figure of speech. But my figure of speech also has curves. Does your figure have to run in the mornings, too? Do you, too? Do you always talk like this? Talk like what? Like, Talk like what? Like what? I think that answers my question. Uh, never mind. So, uh, I struggled to think of small talk and settle on the obvious question. How'd you two meet? Rin seems content to let Am Emmy answer the question. Someone in the housing department thought that we'd compliment each other well, so we were assigned rooms right next to one of each other. Compliment each other? Like shoes and a suit. Huh? Emmy giggles at my confusion. Put us together and we've got all of our limbs, right? Ah. Uh, so I started helping Ren get ready in the mornings, and that was that. I mean, you can't help someone get dressed every morning and not get along. I see. Ren chooses this moment to interject. I have problems. I have trouble with shirts. Right. That seems fairly obvious. Really? Kind of? This isn't helping, but at least Emmy seems to find the whole thing funny. That, combined with the fact that Rin is genuinely curious, makes me feel slightly better yet confused. I mean, you've got no arms, Lieutenant Dan. Uh, that's... that's... that, that joke's too old for anyone to laugh at. Also, he didn't have legs, you fuck. So, so uh, putting on a shirt seems like one of those things that would be difficult. You know what, I'm just going to stop talking now. It'll save me a lot of trouble in the long run. Rin nods in what I ex suspect is to be a sage manner. I see. I turn my attention back to lunch. It's really good. Emmy finishes hers first, her lunch first. And makes a contented noise. <laughs> ah, that was good. As she busies herself with cleaning up her lunch, Rin speaks up. I'm I'm thirsty. Oh, I almost forgot about that. Sorry. 
With a flourish, she reaches into her bag and removes a trio of juice boxes. Okay, now, I just want you all to know that juice boxes are not, like, they're just not good enough for a high schooler. I could, like, down a juice box in literally a few seconds as a high schooler. She tosses me one that I believe is cranberry juice, one to... Written that seems to be strawberry milk, complete with the pink color scale, and keeps a equally pink box of some kind of fruit punch for herself. Rin dexterously stabs her straw through the top of the box and begins to drink. Once again, I'm impressed by how flexible she is, but this time I keep my comment to myself. Somehow, I don't think Emmy or Rin are the Sort of people who think twice about the way they work around their particular disabilities. Ren especially so. Indeed, she gives off the impression of being completely unaware that she's missing any limbs at all. <clears throat> Whether or not that is a conscious decision is another matter. I'm honestly not sure. So, Hisao, how do you like it up here? Hmm? It's quite nice, actually. I like the high places for the view. Thanks for inviting me up here. And for lunch, too. Emmy grins a thousand watt grin. Pleased by my response, I suppose. No problem. Feel free to eat with us next time, okay? I won't make you lunch, but you can bring your own up here. No lunch service? I don't know. Emmy looks mock offended. Trying to take advantage of me? <laughs> I mean, this is a dating game, uh... Haven't you ever played a visual novel before? No? Oh, okay. The nerve. She giggles. Well, if that's your answer, I guess Ren and I will just keep eating lunch alone. I'm suddenly assaulted by the most heartrending puppy dog eyes I've ever seen. As Emmy pouts. I was kidding, I was uh, kidding. I'd love to eat, up, eat lunch up here again. Good location, and the company's good too. Emmy frowns a bit at my declaration of okay, but seems happy enough that I've accepted her invitation. I guess this makes us friends now, or at least acquaintances. Lunch buddies! The lunch bell rings, signaling a return downstairs. Ren, you didn't finish your lunch again. I wasn't that hungry. If you don't eat more, you're gonna fade away. Ren shrugs as if this is an acceptable risk. Come on, we'd better get going. The three of us head downstairs together. The afternoon class passes. Once again, I find myself scrolling the mouse wheel. I mean, find myself without a plan for plan for a plane, a plan for something to do after school. So I head to the library to return a couple of books that I finished reading. I remember I was a lot more of a voracious reader in, like, high school than I was in really ever again. Maybe I'll return to that someday. Not while I'm making shitty YouTube videos, though. Um, walking inside, I see that there are about as many students here as there were on Tuesdays, so all the more evident of the almost total silence enveloping the room. As I drop the books I'd borrow into the return slot in the counter, Yuko suddenly pops up from behind me quite startled from the banging that they make when they hit the trolley next to her. Uh, sorry Yuko, I didn't mean to startle you. No, no, that's fine. It happens a, a lot. I'm used to it now. Um, can I help you? You're very jumpy. I don't know if that, like, if there's, like, a medical condition to that, but you are. It's okay, I think I know where everything is, thanks anyway. I suppose I'll grab another book or two while I'm here. There's not much else to do, and after reading so much during my stay in the hospital, it's become a hard habit to break. I wander down to the fiction section towards the back of the library, scanning the bookshelves for anything that catches my eye. As I do look over the counter where Hanako had been last time I was here, not really expecting anything to come of it, I so I just so happen to actually find something I'm interested in, girl. I'm kidding. 
Surprisingly, though, she's there, absorbed completely in a fairly thick book. I decide against intruding on her last time and get back to finding reading material. However, that picture kind of makes it look like she saw me. It's okay, though. After an indiscernible amount of time, pursuing the aisles, perusing the aisles, my bad, <laughs> those aisles aren't going anywhere, I finally decide on a couple of books to get and slide them off the shelf. With a minimum plus, I quickly walk over to the counter, check out my books, and pop them into my bag as I walk out. By the time I leave the main building, the sunset isn't too far away. A small trickle of students remain, but the majority have left, presumably to their homes and dorms. I guess I need to buy some supplies, I can't live off of cafeteria food forever. Food and eating out my entire stay here. As I leave the gate, I make a few loud stretches to try to stave off the tiredness that's accumulated over the week. Oh, oh, hi. After passing through uh, and rounding the corner, I see a solitary figure walking downhill towards the small town below. The color of her ha hair and tapping of her cane are unmistakable. I quickly walk up to her, which seems to catch the her attention without a word needing to be said. Hi, Lily. She takes a moment to place the voice, slightly adjusting her head to face a bit more towards the source of my voice as she does. He Sal? Yep, that's me. She seems to have a pretty good memory for voices. The fact that she remembered is a pleasant surprise. <laughs> good evening. What brings you here? Once again, she gives a small polite bow and... Once again, I reply in kind before realizing that I needn't do so. You're uh, just going into town, you? My, my, what a coincidence. Doing the same thing, eh? Mmm. I usually go shopping on Fridays. She pauses for a long moment, suddenly looking a little lost. That said, Hanako usually comes into town with me. Uh, not lost, but worried. The two seem to keep pretty close tabs on one another. It's kind of surprising that Hanukkah would just forget Lily like that. I noticed her in the library. She's probably uh, just got caught up in a book. She lets out a small sigh of relief. Thank you. She has a habit of doing that. Avid reader? Right. She doesn't like being around crowds of people, so reading away from everyone lets her relax a bit. Although she didn't intend it, I can't help but grimace as I recall my first meeting with her. Hardly wanting to bring it up, I remain silent as we continue to walk down the quiet road. Tack, tack, tack. The ro with the road bereft of cars, the students of Yamaku <coughs> increasingly far behind us, the quiet rustling of leaves and the measured tapping of Lily's cane against the sidewalk are all that can be heard. It's kind of nice, especially compared to the hustle and bustle of where I used to live. Before I know it, I've relaxed so much I let a loud yawn escapes. That a loud yawn escapes before I can control it. Tired? Yeah, I've been running ragged these past few days. That's an understatement to be sure. Transferring into a different school would be bad enough, but nothing like this. Well, hopefully everything should settle down for you. The festival's got everyone in a spin right now, and you've been plopped right in the middle of things. For a moment I hesitate, <clears throat> but given her apparent tolerance for frankness, I decide to give my full thoughts. I guess, Yamaku's kind of different though, I mean... The formality surrounding everything. The isolation around it. Not to mention the most obvious difference. It's a whole different kind of mindset. I suppose I'll get used to it in time, though. She gives me a matter of fact a nod, apparently pleased with the answer, and feels almost as if she's included me in the flock of students she's shepherding, along with Class 3-2 and Hanako. Well, not that I mind. It's nice to get my... Th the thoughts off my chest. 
Looking on the bright side, one could see it as a chance for a new beginning. You could cherish the ability to make new friends. That's optimistic. Nonetheless, I... It's good to have such a positive attitude about things. I guess that's a good take on it. Walking on down the road, she seems to be somewhat unsettled. Before I can ask what's on her mind, she seems to collect herself and speaks up about something else. So, where in town are you going? That's actually a pretty good question. I'd come to buy food, but the layout of the place is still totally foreign to me. I hadn't intended just to wander around and see what I could find, but with the sunset already approaching and nightfall not too far away, that doesn't seem very wise. I'm going to have to ask her for directions again. I was just going to get some food, but now that you mention it, I don't really know the way. Well, now this is quite lucky. I was going to go to the convenience store myself. Looks like I'll be in your care again, then. Thanks. Care for me, blind lady. Together we walk to the store. My pace is carefully slowed to remain beside her. Compared to my usual walking pace, hers is a, quite a bit slower. Not that it's without reason. After what can be more than several minutes, I catch the sight of our objective. This town really is pretty small. Without much further ado, we make our inside with a greeting from the counter. Mind if I tag along with you? Usually Hanako would help me, but seeing as she's not here... It takes a few moments before I realize what she means, considering she wouldn't be able to read any of the labels, shopping without any help would be a big pain for her. That said, I can't shake the feeling that she'd had this idea since I said I was coming with her. Sure, it'd be my pleasure. I grab two red baskets from the small stack beside the entrance, handing one to Lily. She lays it on the ground, putting her school bag in, retracting her cane and sliding through the basket's handles before picking up with her right hand. Wait, if she doesn't use... Her can't- oh! Oh god, she's touching my arm. Um, before I can complete the thought, she comes besides, beside me and pinches the cuff of my uniform with her slender fingers. Is this alright? Uh, uh, sure, um, oh, goodness. <laughs> I have no reason not to accept. I can think of worse things than shopping with a pretty girl holding on to me, even if it's out of necessity. I mean, whenever a woman grabs onto me, it's out of necessity. After all, I'm Hiso. Sexiest man in the world. The manager of the Heartbreak Hotel. We navigate our <laughs> way through the store, with not one of the occasional passing customers seeming to bat an eyelid. Considering how close Yamaku is, I guess seeing students from there must be entirely normal for their local residents. As we reach each aisle, I quickly check with Lily and find out what she needs. I grab it along with what I'm looking for and put our items into their respective baskets. I guess this is the same routine she and Hanako follow every Friday. Right, all that's left is the bread and that should be shopping done. Do you need anything else, Lily? No, this should be everything. Off we go then. With a quick little side trip to the bakery section, we make our way to the registers. The line, thankfully, is almost non-existent. It's not long that before we've both paid for our food and are out the door. As Lily retrieves her cane and extends it to full length, I waste a minute looking upwards at the night sky while holding both our bags. For a moment, I make clouds with my breath, but the summer's heat doesn't seem to cooperate. Oh, so it's summer. Okay, so we are kind of a little bit deeper into the school year than just like a month or two. We're like, maybe three? Eventually, she writes herself. A, qu a quick stretch before taking her bag and 
Leaving me to m my my two? You tired as well? The festival preparations have been complete chaos. She's an A breathing down my neck doesn't exactly help things either. Hey, she's only trying to get everything organized better now than late, right? I suppose. I'm going to enjoy relaxing in town tomorrow, that's for certain. I guess the festival preparations must be taking their toll on both of them. We walk onto the quiet street, making or talking between ourselves as we carry our bags of food and supplies from the store. Wait, what's that? I notice a very distinctive figure making its way out of the, towards us, silhouetted by street lamps. For a second, I think it's another male student from my class, but as he, or should I say she, gets closer, I recognize her very quickly. Ren, what are you doing out so late? Ren? Lily perks her head, looking like she's trying to focus on listening more keenly. It suddenly comes to me that I should probably interpret the scene for her. It's Ren Tezuka, uh, I think was her last name, from sco our school. She stiffens at the name and gives a com complicated looking expression, something like a forced confusion of a composed smile and a painful cringe. Uh, I understand. I guess Lily knows Rin too? Rin turns to look at us, looking terribly out of it. I'm not entirely sure if she recognizes either of us, or at least she doesn't acknowledge us if she does. She's like a zombie or a statue or a statue of a zombie. But slowly, symptoms of understanding seem to light in her dark eyes. This is something she must react to. Ren blinks once, very thoroughly. Hello. There is an awkward pause, everyone waiting for someone else to say something. What are you doing out here this late? I... I was wondering of that about myself, too. Just now. Some people asked that before. I assume they're wondering the same. I didn't know. They didn't know either. I asked. That's why I'm wondering. So that's pretty much it. It's a murder mystery without a murder. They were going that way. She turns to face... Uh... To turn her, turn yeah, yeah. She turns facing to her right in order to demonstrate the direction the other people went to, as if that was important. Then rotates back like a mechanical puppet in one of those overly complicated clockworks. For a person who gives an impression of being very quiet, Ren does use a lot of words to say things that don't need to be said. That don't need a lot to be said. <clears throat> Unsure if she's finished, I say nothing, neither does Lily, who seems equally robbed of words for the time being. I think that both of us are, in fact, scared that any response might provoke her to continue. Our stupefied look of reaction doesn't phase Rin at all. She keeps looking at us expectantly, a calm hint of an expression on her, on her br blank face. She seems to be that kind of person, always so relaxed as if a bull elephant grade sedatives were flowing in our veins in place of blood. Do you have amnesia? I don't recall you having anything of the sort though. No, I don't think it's that. Uh, the other passerbys were probably just worried though. You do look really lost though, by the way you're staying in the middle of the street. Oh, I see. Maybe I should have taken some other kind of pose in that case. I ponder for a while whether I should chase this angle or give up for the sake of my own sanity. <clears throat> I decide on the latter. It seems that most of the time it's better not to read too deeply into what Ren is babbling about. Talking with Ren is like playing chess with a supercomputer that, who seemingly completely random moves as if to mock everything you know about chess. It's like that, except with human interaction. And even if I win, it feels like losing. Damn. It's like Kenji said, even when I win, I lose. Is this the power of girls? Of Yamaku? I push the thought aside. It's 
too dangerous to consider. It's probably just Kenji's anti-female propaganda getting to me during a moment of weakness. Yeah, maybe taking another pose w might have worked. So, you have any idea what you're doing here? She frowns, looking extremely displeased at either my question, its consequences, or the answer she's about to give. I do have some idea. I can't really tell what kind of idea. That sounds like progress, at least. Well, it sounds as if she spotted an opening for some kind of discernibly normal conversation. I can't s say I share her optimism. Yes, there's some, definitely. The rest will come later. I'm sure of it. I always have reasons. The ensuing silence kills Lily's hopes all too visibly. That doesn't didn't last too long. Reds, as far as I can tell, unbased. Assurances aside, what should I? What should be done? We could just leave her to her own devices, whatever those are. But it's late, and I don't think we sh will be getting any thanks if Ren is found standing here in the middle of the night. Well, she, which she probably will, unless she manages to remember what she was doing here in the first place. As for me, uh, trying to guess what might have been going on in her head when she decided to embark on this adventure, the chances seem like on par with winning the lottery. Several times in a row. Lily's quiet, oddly quiet. Two. I'd appreciate some support from the sidelines here, especially if she's more familiar with Rin than I am. But it can't be helped. It seems her familiarity with Rin is exactly why she's staying subdued. So, I assume you were going somewhere and not coming back to school? Any idea where? Her eyes widen in shock when she jolts back in a somewhat artificial way, making it seem like her act was re rehearsed for situations like this. Are you a mind reader? Are you a mind reader? Is that your disability? How unique. No, what? Why would you even think that? That's not a disability, that's an extra ability. You knew what I was doing. Uh, eh, it was an educated guess. We walked the same street in the other direction just before to go to the store. If you're trying to get to school, we would have met you on the way. Oh. She looks a little disappointed. A Kenji, Ren, appears to jump to completely irrational conclusions. Let's hope they make a beautiful OTP. Maybe it's because, maybe it's something in the water here. I make mental note to stock up on soft drinks. You know, that is the second time this week that something, that someone asked if I was a mind reader. Do I really give off that impression? Bryn shrugs her shoulders, which is all the answer I get, you know. Maybe you should come back with us to the school? Lily interjects as I am about to further debunk my alleged mind reading capabilities. She sounds rather concerned, the pencil, the paper thin smile on her face badly disguising that fact. Maybe she came to the same conclusion I did. For everyone's sake, I decide to let the mind reading topic drop, it's entirely inane anyways. Yeah, L Lily's right. If you can't remember, there's no point in staying here. Rin considers this rather simple deduction for a moment, then nods. Okay. Ooh, now I've got two girls. Just kidding. And it's dark out. We start towards the school again, having wasted way more time than necessary with the, this episode. Ren walks along the path of the sidewalk in her rhythmic way, looking like a mix of a sleepwalker and a rope dancer, while Lily keeps one hand on my shoulder, tapping at the ground with her cane. Tap, step, step, tap, tap, step, step, step. Apart from that and a few fragmented beings, beginnings of conversation, it's quiet. A quiet, quite apart from the relaxing one into town at that. So how's the mural going? We're going to get bad luck, never talk about works in progress. I'm sure it will be wonderful. Bad luck. Tap steps. 
Tap, step, tap, step. She doesn't s care to talk about it. Liz's politeness feels out of place. For the first time, step, step, step. The Yamaku, the hill Yamaku rests on top of is surprisingly steep going uphill. We slow the pace, but I feel my pulse rising and breathing getting heavier. Almost there, I can see the gates already. If I freaking have a heart attack, I'm going to be pretty gosh darn mad. More than that, I, though, I notice that Lily's hand slightly tightens up on my shoulder, interpreting it as a gesture that she wants to ask something I speak up. Anything wrong, Lily? I resist the urge to say, aside from our traveling companion, but only just. For a moment, she seems to debate whether she should bring it up or... But she goes for it anyway. Is everything alright? Alright? How do you mean? The fact that I can't interpret her incredibly vague question puts her off for a second. It's just, you seem unusually tired, I guess. Now that she brings it up, I notice my breathing breathing is strangely heavy. The uphill walk has really done a job on me. Um, I think being honest is the best uh, policy. Let's see here. Give a break. Um, doesn't say anything. I'm gonna say, sorry, I'm not in very good condition. I'm gonna save really quickly, just in case, though. Create new save state. Return. Sorry, I'm not in very good condition. It's alright. I just need to catch my breath. My condition isn't the best these days. Oh. Is it something that is related to you being transferred here? I mean... She cuts herself off rather abruptly, maybe realizing she was being a br bit intrusive. Her instincts are sharp, though, and while I don't like talking about the subject, it's not like I should lie about it either. If it's Lily, I don't think I mind. I'm just a little weak for the time being. Hanako said you look fairly healthy, so I naturally thought... Lily doesn't finish her sentence again, letting it trail off without a measure of concern. As she furrows her brow, Lily's uncomfortable expression spurs me to say at least something to ease her feelings. It's surprising she's this flustered considering her straightforward attitude with her own blindness. She must know that not all share her own comfort about such things. No, it's okay. I have a pretty, I guess the best way to put it would be messed up heart. Arrhythmia. I had a bad heart attack a while ago because of it and spent most of the spring at a hospital. Ended in Yamaku's. Ended in Yamaku on doctor's orders. She silently nods her head in acknowledgement. My answer, though, only seems to make Lily furrow her brow even deeper. She doesn't s seem to quite know how to react, given we don't really know each other that well, yeah. I can't really fault her for it, given I have the exact same reaction. To my surprise, in a moment's time, her face shows that she's come to some sort of realization. Wait, so the time when Emmy and you collided in the hallway? I grimace slightly. Her ability to connect the dots quite so fast is unexpected. Yeah, I guess, uh, I'm a textbook example of why those rules about running in the hallway, running in the corridors exist. That was a lot more dry than I'd attended it. Lily visibly shies away from continuing the topic. While I do want to assuage her concern, I really don't want to dwell on this either. Don't worry about it. I try to offer a reassuring smile, but then I realize the futility. Without knowing this... Without knowing this, Lily smiles at me reassuringly, but doesn't say anything further. Arriving at the school dorms, Bryn stops in the front of the school mural as if lightning had struck her. 
She had been so quiet for almost the whole walk back that I'd all but forgotten she was there. It's Friday, isn't it? Yes, Friday, the 8th of June. This is bad. Bad? Why? I think I'm going to go into the fetal position and throw up, possibly in reverse order. Is something wrong? No, nothing is wrong. It's Friday and nothing is wrong yet. This mural, it's going to need to be finished by Sunday, so everything's alright. Do you have any drugs or a time machine? This is not good. Not good. So sh she's behind schedule, recalling Shizune's exasperation at Rin's carefree attitude several days ago. I don't know what to think. She has left herself open to a... For a don't... I told you so. Unless she can pull off whatever she needs to pull off by Sunday morning. Rin keeps staring at her mural, looking as more fine as she can. Leave me. I'm going to need to work for a while. I glance at Lily, expecting her to share an incredulous look with me as I roll my eyes, but then I realize she is not the one to do that type of thing, and she literally can't see me rolling my eyes. She's blind. Leave me. We do, of course, not wanting to aggravate her any more than she already is. There is a churning, bad feeling in my gut. Rin has a knack of making people worry about her. She seems like a person who should never be left alone. I don't know. I don't want to deal with that in my life. Maybe we should call someone. She sounded like she was going into shock or something. I'm sure she'll be just fine. She's just, uh, uh, how to say... Lily cocks her head, trying to find a polite way of calling Grin crazy without calling her crazy. Unique? Yes, I'm a very unique person. I guess you could say that. <clears throat> she giggles at the motion, melodious, melodiously nodding in agreement. Sorry about leaving you stranded as you talk to her. I don't really understand her, so I keep my distance. So my guess was right. Off Lily offers a slight apologetic smile as if to... She was sorry that her own shortcomings have prevented her from being closer to Ren. I'm not one to blame her, at all. Lily slips a long breath, probably a disguised yawn. Imagine she's as exhausted up by all this as I am. I'd better leave now and give those to these to Hanako. Thank you for the company, Hisao. She smiles very sweetly at me. It feels different than normal, despite the fact that she seems to be smiling so often. I can't put my finger on what the difference is. It's just different. Relaxed, I'd say, but that's probably just relief of getting over Ren, maybe. Yeah. Good night. Say hi to Hanako for me. I will. Good night. Alright, I think that's it. Oh, I was actually supposed to do that. Okay, guys, um, that's a good point as any. Stay safe. Have fun. And remember. Oh. Stay safe, have fun, and of course, you know, try not to go out walking too late at night. You know I worry about you guys. Even if the road doesn't get a lot of traffic, okay? One of those things is more important than the others. <gasps>